Well, Chris, we're standing in your front yard, which is just an incredible uh, garden of flowers and edibles and herbs that you have for the winged creatures that are all flying all around us. Tell me a little bit about how long it's kind of taken you to reclaim it back from, you said, original turf when you moved in. Well, it um, used to all be lawn, everything you see here. This was all grass. Pretty much we saw a couple hummingbirds show up mm -hmm. about, um, about six to eight years ago, somewhere in there and um, had a couple feeders out. They showed up every year. We've seen a couple more. So uh, I made the decision to turn the entire lawn into what you see now, uh, basically a hummingbird butterfly it's garden. It's almost like a sanctuary, yeah. I exactly. guess, for me. And ever since then, you were just kind of bit by the bug and just continued offering a safe habitat no. and food sources, and they just no. came in droves. Uh -huh. Exactly, and they haven't stopped. Every year they keep showing up. The numbers go up every year. The migratory patterns, when they show up, they know where their food source is. Uh -huh. So they fly here and they stay here every year. Do you feel like you're kind of even though you know, might not have the data tracking on it, but do you feel like you have some of the same families and herds that are kind of swarms, I guess, I don't even know what you call them, coming back to the same feeding ground, nesting grounds in yeah, the summer? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I can tell because they're, they're more tame than most hummingbirds. Um, first thing I hear from people that come over, they say you can get very close to the hummingbirds. Uh -huh. and, and normally you can't do that. So I'm, that, that tells me they're pretty, pretty much the same ones. Uh -huh. they're, they're used to people, they're used to this environment. Gotcha. Um, there's always somebody walking around. If it's not me, it's somebody else. Sure. What kind of types of hummingbirds uh, can I ask as uh, far as the varieties? We get the ruby-throated hummingbird. Okay. That's, the, that's pretty much all we'll have here is the ruby-throated. Occasionally you get the rufous that shows up in the fall. I have yet to see one here, but uh, it's the only other hummingbird that'll pass through. Uh, they travel much further north than the ruby-throated. Gotcha. And so as they're migrating back, if you leave a feeder out in the fall, you might get lucky and see one of the other hummingbirds. The flowers will attract them. The uh -huh. flowers is what you need to, to really bring them in. When they find a yard that has flowers that they like, they will eventually check out every flower in the nearby area, uh -huh. including the feeders. And when they find a feeder, Usually they'll stick around after that. As long as you keep it out there, um, that's where consistency comes. As long as you keep it out there, it's very important to keep it clean. Uh, you wanna make sure there's always food for them. And oh. as long as they have that, they will continue to they show up. move on. Exactly. So the flowers almost kind of serve as a big billboard, big X target. They're coming down looking for more yes. and they'll find the food and that's how you've really kept these families around. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Fantastic. Well, I'd love to take a walk around a little bit and kind of talk about some of the maybe most popular plantings in the garden. Sure, of course. All right. So Chris, as we're kind of walking around the garden, I'm just amazed by the number of hummingbirds that are just swarming all around to, to the different plants and to the different feeders that you have here. Mm. It's just incredible. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the flowers that you've used to kind of act as that sure. uh, big signpost to them and kind of attract them in and use them as feed. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, this guy right here, what we're looking at? Well, this is a tithonia or a Mexican sunflower. Uh -huh. Very attractive, not only to the hummingbirds, but to butterflies, bees. They love this plant. Uh, what makes it a, even more special is that you can grow this in any type of soil. They can even take part shade too. Wow. So you can Huge. plant this anywhere. Gigantic. And you start them by seed uh -huh. early in the year. Uh, whether you start it inside or direct sow it, it'll be this big before the end of the growing season. And what I found mm -hmm. fascinating, you were telling me here, is that I always, that there's a lot of maybe a misconception that that uh, hummingbirds were only attracted to tubular flower type plants. That if I wanted to attract hummingbirds, I gotta only plant tubular flowers. But you're saying that's not the case in this in this uh, way. No, they love this flower. They like this, they love zinnias, the celosia they're very fond of. Uh -huh. um, it's not just the tubular flowers. They, they see an ultraviolet. Okay. Uh, people can't see ultraviolet light, but hummingbirds can. So can bees and butterflies. So this is gonna look a lot more brilliant to them than it does us. Not just red tubular flowers, but um, other flowers have the same Orange, properties. blues. Exactly. Gotcha. And there may be a higher proportion of red tubular flowers that have uh, good ultraviolet reflective mm -hmm. properties, but th some others do too. And it, it's not all just red tube flowers. Fascinating. So mm -hmm. you almost kind of get secondary benefits, not only good as cut flowers for use mm -hmm. inside, but what you're saying, you know, just, this is also covered in swallowtail butterflies, yes. you know, looking around here without scaring them away, just beautiful swallowtails mm -hmm. along with uh, bumblebees 
bumblebees, honeybees, hummingbirds. So it's just a, just a broad range of attractants. Yes, absolutely. Along with uh, the tithonia here in the garden, we uh, also have some uh, blue lobelia. Mm -hmm. You mentioned celosia. Celosia, very, very nice, very popular, very colorful. Not only attractive to the hummingbirds, but it's good to look at. Easy to grow, another plant that's not very picky about soil, almost effortless. Here. Gotcha. Reseeds itself almost from year Every to year. Every year, yes. How about any other plants in the garden that you've noticed that uh, have been food? Well, uh, not so much food. Uh, one thing is the okra here. This is a burgundy okra. It's, um, it turns out that the hummingbirds very much like to use these perches. Oh. And it uh, gives them a good viewpoint. You get yep. these hibiscus flowers here. Yep. And, uh, and you also get okra on top of it. There so it's go. a win, win, win. Food source, almost like a hummingbird mm -hmm. hotel for a little stay and you know, staycation and then bop off to their next food source. Absolutely, yes. You mentioned yes. Uh, black and blue salvia. Yeah, that's a great one for your hummingbirds. Uh -huh. uh, it's almost magical, the effect it has on it. And that's a tubular, dark, it is. type flower as yes, well. Yes, it is, yes. And so Chris, it's obvious that not only do the hummingbirds enjoy the flowers in your garden, but they're also very much attracted to your feeders as well. And you can kind of see that just from you know, what's in the background here, they're absolutely just swarming on this feeder, just chirping away, you know, it sounds amazing. Tell me a little bit about best practices of what you found in your feeding solution and how you manage that. Here in Tennessee, we'll have 90 degree weather, a lot of humidity, that's a recipe for mold, mildew, things you don't want in your feeder. So it's very important to have a clean feeder. Don't let that sugar water go bad. Replace it every two, three days okay. if you can. If not, just take it in, don't replace it, just make some fresh. Uh, one part sugar, four parts water what is what you, you make. Dyes have been found not to be good for hummingbirds. Not even doing dyes, clear No dye fine. at all, just sugar water, that's all you need. Okay. Along with placing the feeders uh, mm -hmm. throughout the garden, you just have them here on shepherd hooks, mm -hmm. kind of spaced throughout, There's no really rhyme or reason to it, just kind of implanted next to your garden for best viewing practices? That's the number one right there, so you can see them all. Another thing too, you'll notice the songbird feeders are kind of outside of yeah, this area. Yeah, you mentioned something about a little competition or something. Yeah, exactly. The hummingbirds get very aggressive this time of year when they're migrating. They're competing for the food. Um, if you watch them, you'll see they do a lot of fighting. Amongst themselves. Amongst even. themselves for and the food. And with songbirds, you said. And with the songbirds. They will chase away cardinals. They will chase away finches. I've seen them chase hawks. Uh, they will chase anything. Wow. So um, that's why I have all the birds set out to the side. So it's not just for the looks, it's for the for that reason too, to keep right. the songbirds happy. Gotcha, so you're kind of separating your songbird feed from your hummingbird exactly. feed. Exactly. I had no idea that that was the case, but mm -hmm. um, they're so cute and cuddly, but uh, <laughs> they can get a little territorial oh, when it comes to food. Absolutely, like yes, yes. And then along with the gardening aspect of it, I could tell um, we we're talking, you have a similar passion in photography. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and uh, how that has kind of come into play around your home here. Well, a lot of that ties directly in with this. Um, I like to do a lot of macro photography. And so um, having somewhere where I can walk out the door and just start taking pictures is, um, is, is nice. And macro <laughs> photography meaning? Uh, very tiny, very tiny close photographs. Close-ups? Exactly. Shot? Okay. Very close-ups, um, half inch or smaller. Wow. Um, so on the flowers, you'll see again, not only the hummingbirds, a lot of bees, a lot of insects, a lot of small things that you don't notice until you start walking around here. Being quiet and staying up close is some, I imagine, some of the best practices for getting that perfect shot. Exactly, exactly. And the songbirds make for great photography too. What time of the year? Some hummingbirds are, I guess, more summer oriented. You were yes. saying songbirds are more different season? In the fall. In the uh, fall, they'll show up. The hummingbirds, they'll be here till maybe mid-September and then they'll start tapering off. Um, a lot of times the last one we tell to go home in October. Uh -huh. uh, starts getting a little frosty, so we have to take the last feeder down and say it's time time to go home. Time to go, close up shop. Exactly. <laughs> where, can, uh, where can viewers learn a little bit more about your photography? You mentioned uh, Instagram as, yeah. as a source. Instagram, I'm on Instagram as a birds, bugs, plants. There's no and, just birds, bugs, plants. Birds, bugs, plants. Fantastic. Yes. I just want to thank you so much for your time and attention to your garden. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.